not only have but I listen. And the Lord your God, you shall worship, then I will bless your food and your drink, and I will remove all sickness from your midst, from the Catholic Bible. Don't make any image like anything in the heavens above, here or below. Don't bow down to them. Don't certain that thou shalt completely demolish them and smash them down. And God said, then will I take away from thee all sickness. This is the healing covenant. No wonder so many church people are sick and diseased and infected. They are not making it their business to smash, break, and destroy images and idols that's made with man's hands. When God said, which I hate. If you want more on this subject, write me for the little booklet, Images and Idols, versus the Bible. What does the Bible say? I'll send you one without cost. How can you claim healing? God will take away all your sickness and all your disease and infirmity. How can you reign in this covenant with God? Him fulfill his part, then you haven't fulfilled your part. What is it? Break up images and destroy idols. As I've said again and again in these campaigns across the nation, you may not be able to go yourself further than a day in less than a couple of months. Schedule. Numerous great campaigns. 7,000 islands, 33 million population back in the Philippines till this Christmas is over. We've got only five more campaigns here in America than on the back side of the world. But 97 out of every 100 most of the areas are bowing down and doing service. It's which God says he hates and says they should never have been fashioned nor made. You say, you go down there and tear them up and break them and smash them. We get them saved and converted and they go home and break them up themselves. Hallelujah. We preach the gospel and they're converted and saved. We see them tear those shoes from around their necks standing right out in the park of the crowd of the open fields where we conduct the meetings and bring him to us and say, we don't need this any longer. I've got Christ in my heart. I don't need him hanging around my neck. And you can go with us in spirit. You can send us there with your offering. One area where we will be, be conducting meetings in January. 97% Muslim. They believe in Jesus, but that he was just a good man. But he was nothing like Mohammed. Jesus was just a prophet, a teacher. He's dead. They buried him. They say, yes, but he rose from the dead. They say, you can't prove it. They say, oh, yes, we can. This is why many missionaries in these areas are unsuccessful. They believe that Jesus died. He's still in the tomb. The ordinary missionary that can't heal the sick and perform miracles in Jesus' name can't prove to the Muslims that Christ ever rose from the dead. We bring somebody blind or crippled or hauled or dying and say, if Jesus don't heal this person, go on back to my hammock. Because Jesus is still dead. But if in the name of Jesus I pray and I see a miracle, will you believe that he rose from the tomb? You can read it out of the Bible all you want. But if you don't prove it, let them see he's alive and he still heals the sick and he still performs the miraculous. He's the same yesterday and forever. He won't believe. This is why when we were in Kutamata City, the same place I'm referring to, we saw the Muslims saved night after night by the thousand, including their priests. Not just because they heard something, but because they heard the preaching and they saw something as we backed it up to healing the sick and performing the miraculous. See ya! We can't take all of you people down there. But you can put $10 in the missionary offering or $20 or you can make a $100 pledge and you can designate it for these coming campaigns and to support our Bible school in Manila. The native workers that were training there are preaching the gospel for you. And God will bless you because they will tear down the images and smash the idols in your place. The lights are going out in just a few moments. On this big screen here in this auditorium, you're going to see men carrying crosses, wearing crowns, and you're going to see religious leaders splitting their backs open with razor blades till the blood gushes out and men beating themselves into unconsciousness and many times death, trying to find God. And you're going to see the images 
made by men's hands out of plaster of Paris and stone that they say prayers to. And the black Christ of the Philippines that they bow down to millions follow him. And good Friday and Easter time wiping his toes, hoping to get a blessing or a miracle. If we can watch this without weeping, surrendering everything to God, being willing to give him everything you've got, without being willing to go, I'm afraid you're so cold spiritually. You will never make heaven your home. And if you can sit here and watch this, not be willing to make another hundred dollar missionary pledge, just to take the whips out of these hands, you're backslid. Raise your hands and let's pray, Father, so to spend. There are things in radio land that can't. Has he caused you to do the same thing? Well, I'm going to tell you how you can do it today. Listen. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. This is Deuteronomy 5, verses 7, 8, and 9. Thou shalt not make thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, that is there beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Listen to Deuteronomy 27, 15. Cursed be the man that maketh any image or molds an image. God said, Cursed be the man that makes any kind of a graven molten image, which is an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and putteth it in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. I'm quoting scripture. Psalm 78, 58, for they provoked him in anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. Psalms 97, 7, confounded be all they that serve graven images and boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all ye people. Listen. John 4, 24, for God is the Spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit. And in truth. How many feel the Spirit today? Do you feel the Spirit? Yes. Amen. I don't have to feel something around my neck with my fingers. I feel something in my heart. I feel something in my soul. If you ever born again and have an experience with God I've had, you won't have to see it as something hanging on a wall. A text on a wall. Now you're kind of getting rough on some folks today, aren't you? I'm not getting a bit rougher than God did. And I'm not getting a bit rougher than the Word of God. And the reason I'm telling you that God called us to destroy and to break down and to tear down and root up is so we can build something. Old crops have to be uprooted and turned under before you plant a new crop. Sometimes old buildings have to be destroyed and torn down and broken up before you can put up a new building. Shout yes! There's never been a time when God's children are so sick and diseased and afflicted. Ten percent of all the babies born in America are born crazy. It's been predicted by 1975, 50 percent of all babies born will be born crazy. 40,000 Americans this year will die of cancer just for the lungs. To say nothing about cancer or, or the other parts of the body. 17 million Americans this year will die of just heart disease. To say nothing of the multitudes that will die of liver trouble, kidney trouble, and every other kind of sickness, disease, and infirmity. And the majority of them are church people that could be trusting God and standing on the promises of God, but they are not trusting God for their healing. Do you know why? Can I tell you what God says about it? It's in the book. Listen to this. When God brought his children out of bondage and out of captivity, in Exodus 23, he made a covenant with them, and a covenant is an agreement between two people involving both parties, requiring something of both parties. God made a covenant with